This is Casey Vieta. He holds the record for the most amount of muscle ever gained in a single month. 63 pounds, technically. And over the next few days, I'm going to be putting myself through the exact methods he used to achieve this in order to answer the question, just what was it that made the Colorado experiment so special? Okay, so this is day one of me trying out the Colorado experiment. This study was very unique. It was done in order to find out just what the human body was capable of when pushed to its limit. And the training methods used to get there were probably a bit different to what you'd be expecting. So we are going to be doing a full body session and there's quite a lot of exercises. We are doing 14 in total, but there's only one set on each, which is very weird. And the reps are pretty low as well as we're aiming to hit failure between six and eight so yeah this is unlike anything i've ever done before to be honest okay the colorado experiment officially begins also rest between sets is meant to be just one minute i forgot that so <laughs> This is not what I expected. <laughs> This is torture. Now it was at this point in the session where it clicked with me. There's only one set per exercise because the overall workout is intense as f 63 pounds of muscle in a month. Do you know how mad that is? That's probably like two to three times more muscle than I've ever gained since I started training. It says that Casey went from 167 to 213 pounds. That's only a 46 pound increase. Can you explain how you got to 63? So basically, they tested Casey like before and after to get like a full read on all of his body tissues, like fat, muscle, etc. And in the process of him gaining 46 total pounds, they also documented that he lost 17 pounds of fat, meaning that the total muscle he gained is is that 63 pounds which which is which is crazy to say and is this completely legit are there any reasons to doubt the accuracy of this well actually yeah there is Okay, that is uh, workout number one, the upper body focused full body session of the Colorado experiment complete. Okay. Given how old the study is, there is bound to be some issues with it. So firstly, Casey wasn't gaining new muscle tissue, but the, the, the study is very open in saying this. So yeah, Casey's starting weight was 167 pounds, but he had previously competed in a bodybuilding show at 215, which means he would have been pretty lean at 215. So he obviously had lost a lot of muscle from that point to where he started this experiment at. So actually all of the muscle tissue he gained was achieved via muscle memory, which is way, way easier than just growing new muscle. Anything more controversial? Well, there's the obvious. Casey claimed natural, but I don't think anyone believes him. You're telling me that the most amount of muscle ever gained in a single month occurred when there were no PEDs involved? I don't think so. What about any inaccuracies in the results? Um, yeah, there, there is one thing. Okay, it is day two of the Colorado experiment. Today is a rest day. So as you saw, I just cooked up a pretty low calorie meal, this many calories. And that is because we're in a 500 calorie deficit whilst following this thing. The idea is that the energy your body gets from burning the fat is used towards building muscle, which I guess makes sense if the training is intense enough. <laughs> and speaking of the training, my whole body aches today, especially my back. Those negative pull-ups, big fan of them. There's nothing else to add today. So on to tomorrow. 
I personally believe that, although I have no proof of this, the body fat test was incorrect. If you look at Casey's before and after physique, it does not look like a man that has both gained 63 pounds of muscle while losing 17 pounds of fat. Those two things occurring means that his body fat percentage overall would decrease so much, but he doesn't look that much leaner. To me, it looks much closer to someone who gained maybe 46 pounds, like we said earlier, and didn't lose any fat. Okay, we are here. It is day three of the Colorado experiment, the dreaded leg-focused full body session. Now, there are a couple problems I encountered doing this the first time round. It turns out it's quite hard to only rest for one minute between sets if you've got to set up the next exercise from scratch, especially if you also don't know what the next exercise is yet. So, so I've already set up, as you can see, deadlifts there, some of the exercises, so it's going to take me less time between sets. So not only is this going to be much more brutal because it's a leg workout, it's going to be much more brutal because it's much more accurate to the real thing. And I am literally just going to be resting for one minute between all of these sets. <sighs> yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's get this over with. So how would these new results compare to what other bodybuilders have done before? Is it still the record if it's only 46 pounds, not 63? To my knowledge, yes, uh, because that is still an insane number. And uh, to put it into perspective, the, the study actually compared it to Arnold himself when he was um, like prepping for a specific Mr. Olympia. And despite Arnold spending like significantly more time in the gym, Casey had better results. Okay, that is the session done. Um, very difficult, but easier than the first one. I think just being a bit more organized helped a lot. And it's made me, it's made what I thought I was gonna think about these workouts, this experiment, the Colorado experiment. It's made me change my mind a little bit, but I'm gonna sleep on it and I give my thoughts in a bit more depth tomorrow. Well, uh, the Arnold they compared him to was, I believe, the 1975 Mr. Olympia Arnold. And for good reason. He prepped for 16 weeks trying to put on, you know, obviously as much muscle as physically possible because Mr. Olympia. Yet he only went from 210 pounds to 225, whereas the year before he competed at 237. So him at 225 was not him having regained all of the old muscle tissue that he had. He had the ability to use muscle memory like Casey did in the study to go up to 237, but he only was able to go to 225. And if you spread out what they achieved across the time they were training, you get to Arnold gaining less than a pound of muscle per week, whereas Casey was gaining more every single day. And is this data from Arnold accurate? Um, maybe not, because for Arnold it doesn't account for any fat loss, and obviously with a Mr. Olympia prep he was obviously losing fat in the process. It was just total weight change, and yeah, like I said, Arnold almost definitely would have lost fat. So what does this mean? Well, let's make up some figures. Say Arnold lost the bodybuilder average of one to two pounds per week. That's, that's pretty fast weight loss, right? Over 16 weeks, that is obviously between 16 and 32 pounds of fat that he would have lost, which therefore means that his total muscle gain when prepping for the 1975 Mr. Olympia would have been 31 to 47 pounds, not 15 pounds, which is much, much more than we thought. However, it still means that at best, Arnold did the equivalent of what Casey did in four weeks in 16. And actually, if you go off how long each person claimed to spend in the gym when they went, it's even crazier because you then get to Arnold achieving what Casey did in six hours in 228. Despite everything that goes against like the accuracy and whatever of the Colorado experiment, Casey Vieta's transformation is still undoubtedly much more impressive than what one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time could do. So that's it then. Everyone should train like Casey. 
No. But there is plenty of things that he did do right, just not all of it. High intensity, low volume training is legit. Casey was very much ahead of his time in that way. If you asked me after the first one, then I would have said, without a doubt, the workouts are both intense and effective. However, his version of it just isn't quite the best, not refined enough yet. But after doing the second one and doing it properly with the right amount of rest time and actually resting in the rest because I, like I said, was more prepared. Yeah, there just isn't enough to it all. There just isn't enough rest between sets, not enough exercises per muscle and not quite enough volume. The idea was to obviously limit the amount of rest to make the sets more intense so you need less of them, but I don't know, for me, it, it didn't really have that effect. Double it all, maybe even triple the rest and yeah, you've, you've got something really special. Okay, that is all.